Um, so uh, we'll go on to, so this is the uh, opening slide, uh, just re recapping that it's about the Cometro urban extension and relates to the application for a sewage pumping station, water booster and gas pressure reduction station. Okay. So the outline application Smith in 2014 and determined in August 2019 approves a residential and mixed use urban extension at Cometro to include up to 2000 dwellings, employment lands, a primary school, a mixed use local centre and a park and bus facility. As, as well as now progressing and submitting reserve matters applications for the dwellings themselves, the development consortium has submitted an application for the erection of a foul pumping station, water booster station and gas pressure reducing station. The application reference 42 slash 20 slash 0042 has required officers to engage with the statutory undertaker Wessex Water and the applicant to ensure all questions, concerns, fears and objections that have been raised so far by officers, local residents and local councillors are suitably addressed and mitigated in order for me as case officer to make a meaningful, informed and robust recommendation at the planning committee in the near future. Given this application represents a critical piece of infrastructure to support a very important site for SWT, in consultation with the planning committee chair, we felt it would be beneficial at this point in time for all councillors, especially for those on the planning committee, but also local ward councillors to receive this briefing. In order to support this briefing, I am supported by Gillian Sanders and Mike Gale from Wessex Water, Lawrence Turner from Barton Wilmore, who acts as the planning consultant for the development consortium, and, and John Heath from Stantec, who provides the technical advice and support to the development consortium on these matters. There is a lot of detail to go through, so we have devised the briefing as a question and answer session using questions largely raised as part of the consultation process on the planning application. These questions have been shared with our contributors in advance of this session in order that they may provide as detailed answers as possible. In order to remain momentum, could councillors save any additional questions to the end? Uh, we are recording the audio of this session. This is important to me as I wish to release the recording into the public domain to maintain transparency over this application, which many local people see as very controversial. Along with the audio, we will attach the slide, these slides and make this package available. The intention is that the information will be set out on the planning case file this week. This briefing is a fact-based technical overview. I am not expressing any opinion or giving any indication as to the eventual planning officer's recommendation on the report. And any councillors who at the end of this session wish to ask any questions should ensure that no opinion is expressed in asking those questions so as to prejudice themselves from future involvement at the planning committee. I'll now pass over to Lawrence Turner, who will provide a recap on the development so far and describe the scope of the utility infrastructure application. Thanks, Simon. Um, so as most people on the call probably know, uh, this is the location of the uh, urban extension. Um, the plan on the right shows um, the Southwest Taunton urban extension, uh, the red line that was submitted back in 2014 and granted planning permission uh, two years ago now. Um, it identifies, as Simon says, a site for up to 2,000 homes, uh, a park and bus site, um, a local primary school, uh, and uh, a local centre with um, small, small retail. Um, it also includes, um, I'd say, about 120 hectares of land um, between the A38 um, to the uh, west of the site and down um, to Honiton Road uh, Troll, Troll, which is the other access point into the site. So let's flick on to the next one. So the planning permission was approved for a series of parameter plans. This is one of them. This is the land use parameter plan. So it, show, it shows in beige all the approved housing um, in uh, the 
light um, vertical hatching for purple, it shows the location of the primary school, which is the easternmost location. Um, it, it allows um, Spymo to go through the site from east to west, which is the dark um, black dotted line. Uh, and it shows employment um, in the light blue and a park and bus site in the dark blue. But basically the parameter plan uh, sets out what can be built and where. So for example, you can only allow um, reserve matters approval for housing in the beige area. Likewise, you can only put the park and bus site in the dark blue and the employment in the light blue, et cetera. So it just sets out the parameters for the permission. Here's the next slide to sign. Um, this is the approved uh, green infrastructure plan. So in a similar vein, this sets out all the um, vegetation and green infrastructure across the site. So it shows um, the vegetation which would be removed, hedgerows in the brown colour, um, vegetation that would be retained and enhanced in the dark green. Um, it shows all the existing and uh, proposed new green infrastructure in the light green across the site. Um, and as well as that, it shows where the um, children's play areas, so the leaps and the neeps uh, and the laps will be located across the site by the uh, stars and uh, asterisks. Um, it also shows um, as part of the public open space where things such as allotments and sports pitches will go. So all, all of the green that you see on the plan will remain green as part of the new development. You can flick on to the next one, Simon, thanks. So this is the um, approved um, master plan for the site, which was approved as part of the design guide. So this was um, a condition which was approved subsequent to getting planning permission, uh, along with the council's design team and planning officers. Um, and it sets out um, a master plan for the Western neighborhood, so for the first half of the site, uh, and a framework that um, subsequent reserve matter applications for housing will need to follow. So you can see um, it's got the approved A38 access roundabout, the park and bus site um, to the south of that, the employment zone. Um, and then if you follow the spine road through to the middle, you've got the local centre um, and the spine road continuing up um, to the edge of the site where the primary school will be located. So if you can flick to the next slide, please, Simon. So this is the um, location plan that accompanied the application for the pumping station. Um, it shows the land that's in the control of the consortium, which is the rest of the urban extension outlined in blue. Um, and because of the size of the site, um, it, obviously the blue lines follow off the page. It shows the application site for the pumping station application edged in red. As Simon is showing you there. Uh, next slide, please. These are two of the plans submitted with the pumping station application, um, all available on the application's uh, website and the council's um, planning application files. Um, basically, showing um, in the two plans the vegetation and proposed landscaping on the left uh, and uh, Stantec's technical layout for the various infrastructure within the pumping station on the right hand side. So at the top left, you've got the gas reducing station. Simon could just point that out. Um, to the right of that, you've got the proposed water booster station. And to the south, you've got the foul water pumping station, which is um, what most of the comments received on the application related to. And um, my colleague, um, John from Stantec will, I'm sure, give you further information on what's proposed when we go through the questions um, in the next couple of slides. Uh, next slide, slide please, Sam. So this is the um, approved, the submitted um, landscape sections. Um, so in bot the bottom right um, image, you can see the landscape layout for the uh, proposed development, and you can see um, two section lines, um, AA and BB. So uh, the top one from point B to point B shows uh, the proposed um, developments in, in the landscape with, it, with the proposed planting around it. 
as you look uh, southwards into the access to the um, facility. So you can see the, um, uh, the existing and proposed vegetation and behind each we've labelled the kiosks, the pumping station, uh, the gas reducing station and the water boosting station. Um, to, the, uh, to the bottom bottom left picture shows the same view looking from the other direction. So looking between points A and A, looking um, from the south, north, uh, westward uh, into the site. And again, you can see the water booster station, the gas uh, PRI. Um, so this just gives a, 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 a view of what you'd be able to see as you're walking in or walking out from the main public um, pedestrian and cycle points within the urban extension. That's really helpful, Lawrence. Thank you very much indeed. Um, so we'll move on to some of the questions that are relevant or pertinent to this application that have been uh, um, raised during the application process. And the first question we're going to start with is, what is the situation with this application and the phosphates issue on the sunset levels and more? The situation uh, this, with this pending application is that it's not caught by the phosphate issue insofar as in itself it is not a generator of phosphates. In consultation with the county ecologist, a Habitats Regulation Assessment or HRA has not been required. However, any pending or future reserve matters application that includes dwellings will require an HRA and these will be detailed in the officer's reports as and when those applications are referred to planning committee. So the next question, we're going to start with the uh, pumping station uh, aspect of this development. What is a pumping station? Who is building it and who manages it? At this point, I'd like to bring in uh, Gillian Sanders. Thank you, Simon. Just waiting for my video to start. Might, might have the pleasure of seeing me, you might not. <laughs> we can see you. All oh, right, excellent. All right, well, well, thank you, Simon. Um, thank you, councillors. So what is a pumping station? So foul sewage, and that's waste from bathrooms and kitchens, will drain by gravity to a foul pumping station and an underground wet well. When the level in the wet well reaches a certain level, a pump will operate to pump the sewerage forward to the existing sewerage network. Pumping stations are typically built where sewerage cannot gravitate off-site due, due to topography or where the receiving network has limited capacity and flows can be passed forward at a restricted rate. So who is building it and who manages it? Currently, the developer is proposing to construct the pumping station to adoptable standards, and that's water industry standards. So our own design and construction guidance and offer the pumping station for adoption by Wessex Water. For a site of this size, there are other options and the developer can choose to have the on-site network operated and maintained by a NAV. A NAV is, stands for New Appointments and Variations. So they're regulated by Ofwat in a retail wholesale, wholesale environment. That's something new to the water industry and it's in effect opening up the industry to competition. So we would then become the wholesaler of our, our services and the NAV would offer a retail package, being the owner and operator of the network on site. And if you like paying Wessex Water to take the sewage away at a particular point off site in bulk. Um, a new appointee has the same duties and responsibilities as a statutory water company. So I don't know if Lawrence or John want to make a comment there on whether it's been decided that Wessex Water will operate the on-site system or if um, a NAV is something that is being considered. Uh, 
So I don't know if uh, Laura has anything to add on the um, the consortium decision on uh, whether they're going to sort of take the um, system to the open market, if you like. I guess the only thing that I would add is if the um, if if that is the route the consortium go down, then the um, uh, the, the company taking on that infrastructure would be under the, exactly the same obligations as the water authority for the area, which is obviously Wessex Water. Um, you know, but the water authorities are a tightly regulated, quite rightly, um, industry because, you know, the, the, the environmental impact of the water supply and sewerage. So I, I don't know if that decision's actually been made yet, Lawrence. I mean, this, we're at a planning stage, aren't we? And, and those things do sometimes come through the detailed design stage. Yeah, that, as I understand, it is it is likely to be the case, but we haven't had confirmation yet um, at this stage. But um, as soon as we do, we can pass it on to the council, uh, who can feed it through the box to um, councillors. Okay. Well, thank you. Let's move on to our next question, which is to unpack the anatomy of a pumping station. So I'll go back to Julian for this. Is there um, a picture on the next slide? Simon? Yep, there it is. Okay, so um, I thought maybe there'd be another picture here, but, but um, that's fine. So typically it's a, a compound, um, a secure compound um, with the wet well and also um, the emergency storage located underground and the controls that you can see there um, in, in an actual kiosk. So um, there's another picture there of one in Taunton. Um, the brick building in, in the front is actually a substation and our pumping station is behind. So that does serve a, a significant um, development within, within um, Silk Mills area of Taunton. And I think if you got on the next slide, the sort of amount of pumping stations did you do that slide in the end? Oh, I, think um, it, I think it comes late. Oh, okay. Okay. So the pumping station is pretty standard. I think we've got around 1,200 plus in, a, in our area. Um, so, you know, we, we're used to adopting them, um, servicing them. And it's quite surprising, I suppose, how well sort of camouflaged they are. And you probably pass quite a few on your way to work or um, shopping um, and not actually notice them. But I can assure you when you start working for Wessex Water, you can't help but um, yeah, see them and admire them. Thank you. Um, this question picks up on a lot of concern that has been raised by local people about the location mm -hmm. of, the, of the utility infrastructure. Why is it located where it is proposed and could it be located elsewhere? Okay, yeah, sure. So it's located at the low point of the site. So future parcels of the development can drain to it. Also got to consider the access of an adopted highway and for the pumping main um, to connect to the existing um, infrastructure, our existing network, it makes sure as well that it can be routed through the development site and in this um, particular instance away from the Gamlington stream. Okay, is there anything to add John, Lawrence at all on that? I talk about the, um, the sort of flood zones in the locality of the application, don't I later, so I will touch okay. upon the, the, um, the sort of topography within that to, to deal with that there. That's fine. Okay, well, let's move on to the next question, which is why wasn't the pumping station included in the outline application? Mm -hmm. So when the outline application was submitted, um, Wessex Water considered a gravity connection to a sewer running parallel to the Gowmington stream. This sewer would require upsizing for the first 300 uh, houses and then we would require um, a new extension sewer as well to accommodate the, the whole site. Um, upon review and site visit, we determined that there would be construction constraints working so close to the stream 
and an on-site solution would have less, less environmental impact. Um, we consider out, outline solutions during outline planning applications and our concern at that stage is we are able to serve the site. There aren't any um, major constraints and then we have options which are developed as the application moves through the planning process. Um, our plans do are often change and we do need to be adaptable. Okay. You've asked to display this particular slide. Yes, yeah, so um, that does show our outline um, solution with the with the outline application and you can see there the extent of upsizing close to the Gamington stream um, and then further downstream if I can say downstream for with our sewer system because that would be downstream there is um, also I think maybe in the next slide um, a significant new sewer that would be required for additional development um, further when that comes on, on board. Yeah, so you can see it there. Sorry, I'm squinting now for what it says in the, the green route, but that, that would be a new sewer after the uh, first phase of the development that would be required. And so, you know, we were looking at significant constructability constraints working so close to the Galminton stream and that's why now um, our strategy has changed and if you do look at the 2014 application and the report from Peter Brett it still does say that we would need uh, storage on site to hold back the flows and that storage would be determined um, as part of the detailed planning application so even though um, the 2014 doesn't show a pumping station, there would still need to be storage on site with that solution. Okay, thank you. Um, another question raised is about uh, flooding in the area. Um, so is the development within a flood zone? and uh, there's reference made in some uh, technical representations about water compatible development. So what is water compatible development? Yeah, so um, the development is outside the flood zones. Um, if you look at the MPPF guidance, you will see what, um, what it is water water compatible development and it does include um, utilities infrastructure including pumping stations um, and if a pumping station at, is at risk from flooding from fluvial or pluvial flooding there are measures that we can Im implement to sh ensure that it is not impacted. Okay thank you if I bring up the flood zone map and ask John just to comment on this. Yeah, so um, uh, as engineers, um, we like to look at things in, in terms of uh, probability of flooding in any one year. Um, so, uh, yeah, we, we obviously, uh, everything is at risk from flooding. Um, and then it's the probability of, of, of that event occurring in, in any one year. So this plan on screen hopefully shows all the, um, the flood zones associated with the, the Gowington stream. Um, and uh, the next slide gives a little breakdown of, uh, of, of those flood zones. So um, the, the light blue is flood zone three. Um, they range from, from one to three for low probability to, to a, a high probability. Um, the, I think the, the reason that the, um, uh, the um, flood zone questions come up because the original application showed a, a, a portion of the storage within one of the flood zones. Now, as Gillian quite rightly highlights, pumping stations and water transfer infrastructure are um, what, what we call um, flood compatible infrastructure. So um, because of the nature of pumping stations need to be located at the low point of sites, often that's uh, areas that are at risk from flooding. 
So, um, you know, the design of the pumping stations are that they're sealed infrastructure, sealed rings, sealed uh, covers. So uh, they can be installed within flood zones. Um, uh, but equally, um, if, if uh, possible, we, we will push them away from, from flood zones. So, I mean, that, that sort of tweak to the application does, um, you know, highlight the need for it the infrastructure to be at the low point because everything's got to gravitate down to that low point, be collected and then pumped away. And, um, uh, and you know, moving out of the flood zone did make it slightly deeper because, um, you know, you, it, it's not right at the low point. Um, but on balance, we felt that actually, you know, whilst it is water compatible infrastructure, um, you know, it, it wasn't, it, it was feasible to move the, um, extent out of the, the, the flood zone. So, so that's what we did. Um, but hopefully the, the slide here sort of shows where those flood zones are um, and how to tweak the application. So actually the pumping station infrastructure, none of the, the utility infrastructure is within those flood zones. So I think if we have the next slide. Yeah, so this, uh, as I say, we, we think about um, flooding as uh, the probability of it happening in any one year. So um, flood zone one is, um, you know, uh, out of flooding, uh, rate ranging up to, to um, three where, you know, you've got sort of functional flood plain. So that's areas that, that will flood um, when, when we have extreme events. Um, so yeah, I, th I think that's, uh, and, and the, the um, areas shown on, um, on the previous plan showed the extent of uh, flood zone one, so um, uh, less than one in 1,000 year annual probability of, of flooding. So, yeah, I think that's, that's, so that's a bit about flood zones. And then this, uh, this slide gives us the sort of list, list of things as you'd expect, you know, um, we, we do have to have infrastructure in um, areas that are at risk from flooding. So uh, sensibly, um, the, the, there's government guidance on what they what what infrastructure is um you know acceptable in, in um zones that are risk from flooding so that includes water transmission infrastructure and pumping stations as you can see other things that you you'd expect to um be uh, sort of compatible with um the associated risk but as i say i think the key for this application is actually we've tweaked the, uh, the the pumping station so it becomes a little more expensive and a little deeper um but it moves it out of that um flood zone so you know it's, it's sort of mitigated that um uh, i suppose perceived um clash okay thanks very much john we'll move on to our next question which is how does the pumping station fit in with the development and the, and the wider network. So okay. Yep, yeah, thank you, Simon. So development parcels were drained to a network of spine sewers draining to the pumping station. And then the pumping station will pump via a pumping main, or we usually call it a rising main, to an existing sewer in Queensway. The rising main will run through the development. You'll see the red line here on the plan to avoid the construction close and alongside the Galmington stream. So essentially the pumping main is a new piece of infrastructure and it will be connecting at a point where um, the sewer is of fairly significant size. Okay. Thank you. The application site obviously adjoins existing houses. Where does sewage from those adjacent properties go? They do discharge to the Galmington Stream network. Um, so this slide here uh, shows the sewers in the, the close proximity to our pumping station, if you like. But they're only small sewers and only constructed to serve um, existing development and they in turn drain to a small pumping station, New Barnes pumping station. And you can see in the bottom right hand picture, um, 
that polygon there, the pink line, that shows the catchment of New Barnes pumping station. There are only 200 properties uh, drained to it. And that's really the extent of the capacity of that particular pumping station. Okay, thank you, Julian. Uh, give, given what you've just said, are there other similar pumping stations in the locality? And I'll start to you. Yeah, so sorry, again, I've given the same picture of the pumping station close to Silk Mills, which is tucked in behind uh, the substations there. And then an extract from our GIS um, system, which just shows sites, our uh, operational sites in Taunton. And the red triangles represent um, pumping stations, existing pumping stations that serve existing development. So you see that they are fairly commonplace. Thank you. I think this next slide shows the proximity of the a new barns pumping station to that uh, being proposed here. The new barns mm -hmm. being arrowed by this green arrow and the proposal shown with a blue arrow. And it's, uh, it's interesting to see that pumping station in situ and the casual observer would look at this scene and just think that's a single garage attached to a dwelling house when in fact it is a roofless uh, walled enclosure with a garage door on the front which uh, houses this, pu this small pumping station. Uh, as mm -hmm. you can see here, there's no roof and by peering over the top and uh, taking a photo, you can see that it houses a kiosk and the same underground infrastructure is, is being proposed um, at the development site. So uh, I thought members would uh, find that interesting and useful to see uh, that, that sort of facility in the uh, proximity. Thank you. Um, Gillian, this is this is a question that has uh, probably topped uh, the level of concern in the local vicinity uh, and residents are very, very concerned about this. Uh, would the proposed pumping station discharge anything to the Galmington yeah. Street? Sure. Um, so some older pumping stations have sewer overflows with environment agency permits to discharge to water courses during storm or emergency conditions. So this is where systems are combined. Um, so that means they take both foul drainage from kitchens and bathrooms and also surface water from impermeable areas. So your yards and your, your roofs. So when it rains, they do react to rainfall and overflows are needed to protect property from sewer flooding. Sewage in these instances um, will be very dilute, but it is something that we absolutely, with these existing sewer overflows, think, seek to make sure it's at an absolute minimum. And um, thankfully, these permits are being tightened throughout the industry all the time. So the new sewage network serving Pometro would transport foul flows only, and the network will be designed and built to accommodate throughout flows from bathrooms and kitchens, there'll be no storm response. So there'll be no overflow and additional storage, so that's our emergency storage, will store flows if there is an emergency, such as a loss of power. Uh, alarms in our control center sent from the station by telemetry will alert our operational colleagues of any issues. So six hours worth of storage will be constructed. So they've got six hours in effect to um, attend to the, the station and sort out any issues. Thank you. Um, we uh, now have a sort of series of questions coming up here about how the facility is managed and what are the common, common errors and faults. Okay, so if the facility is managed by Wessex Water, and we touch briefly on NAVs, um, once adopted, it'd be operated remotely by telemetry. Actual site vis visits would be carried out twice yearly and, respond and in response to any telemetry alarms. The biggest cause of issues at pumping station are the impact of non-disposable items on pump performance. So typically we're talking about wet wipes and fat oils and grease which people um, flush away. 
down sinks and down toilets and the, the biggest issue in our industry for um, flooding and, and impacts. So if upstream sewers are also, if upstream sewers are a poor construction, groundwater can enter causing the pumps to operate for longer and increasing the risk of flooding as can urban creep. And we um, describe urban creep as, you know, your conservatories um, adding the surface water to foul. So over time, those flows can um, build up. Okay. Um, yeah. So we now enter the, the quick fire round, which is uh, a number of questions that have been raised by a particular representation or a couple of representations that that re really relate to that um, that practical element of maintenance and the impacts potential impacts on local residents so I'll just let you uh, sort of navigate your way through there it's if there are odor problems who do we call and will they when it's water or they now fix them yeah, so once a pumping station is adopted by Wessex Water, can call our 24 hour control centre um, and we'll investigate and consider mitigation measures. The pumping station is designed to minimise septicity issues, which can sometimes occur at similar stations where the sewage is in the wet well for longer periods of time or small amounts pumped forward to the network. Um, here, complaints would actually be received from the connection point rather than from the, the pumping station. So the, the, the uh, member of the public has asked if the planner envisions using chemical injection into the sewer system to mitigate odours, is Wessex Water actually obliged to do this and who will pay for it? Sometimes chemical dosing is undertaken temporarily through initial phases where the build-up of flows are slow. Our odour expert advises on this and we we'll only undertake dosing where necessary due to the cost and environmental impact of the production of dosing chemicals. Um, if there is an uh, equipment failure, what kind of alarms are sent? Does Wessex Water have an operator on call after hours? Is there a red light that will disturb nearby residents? Yeah, so our 24 hour control centre will be alerted remotely via telemetry and there are no on-site operational alarms. Operators are on call locally and will be scheduled to attend. Uh, what equipment will they bring in for maintenance? Crane, tanker truck, for example, the pump mm. and or a generator? Yeah, a lifting davit will be available on site to lift the pumps from the wet well, so a crane will not be necessary. Small van will attend for scheduled maintenance visits. A generator will be required if there's a loss of power um, for longer than six hours. And a tanker truck will only be required in emergencies. And how often will you need to remove the cover from the wastewater wet well for equipment maintenance? and how long will this maintenance take on each occasion? So it would attend sort of twice a year. Um, it would be a visual, visual inspection and it would be typically minimal time, you know, minutes rather than hours. And hopefully if people don't discharge their wet wipes, we won't need to disentangle any um, wet wipes from the, the pumps. If the wastewater station does overflow during a power outage, who will clean up the mess? So the station should not overflow due to the six hours storage, but where this is exceeded, the upstream system could surcharge, so just could become absolutely full, leading to restricted toilet use, you know, you wouldn't be able to flush, and eventually, although unlikely to flooding, um, where Wessex Water is the undertaker, we will clean up and compensate. Will there be a washroom facility at the station for visiting staff? So visiting staff fans are equipped with clean water and washing facilities. Uh, local operations depots have restroom facilities. 
uh, can stored sewage waiting to be pumped go septic? Only if it's retained longer than intended due to other issues. It's um, rare in these instances. What is the capacity of the existing system in the area and what additional capacity does this facility provide? Existing system is, limita is limited and the pumping station allows the flows to be regulated and pumped to the point in the network with the greatest capacity. Uh, the local resident asks why isn't there a generator on site? It wouldn't be cost effective um, but facilities will be on site to easily accommodate a temporary generator if required. Uh, whilst we've touched on the Gamerton stream, what are the chances of sewage leaks that end up contaminating the groundwater? Um, it's rare and I know I keep talking about non-flushables but it's up to all of us I believe to not abuse the system. Um, measures are in place to ensure an airtight system is provided that will work effectively and intended to in event of an emergency. Um, when we talk about groundwater I always think about um, potable water as well so water supply but just to say that there's no risk to drinking water here because of sewage leaks in the into the groundwater. Thank you. Uh, what are the risks of failure of seals and joints especially in the rising main? So the rising main will be constructed by Wessex Water to our design standards will be um, heavily tested and inspected and if there are any issues with it moving forward would be alerted through alarms at the pumping station. Okay. Uh, concern has been raised about flotation and the failure of the large plastic sewage storage tank. Could you just comment on that? Yeah, I was going to ask John to um, comment on this because I think he'd know a bit more um, about the manufacturer's tests and guarantees. Um, yes. Particular tank. Yes, thank you. Uh, Julian. Yeah, as I say, um, as I said uh, previously, this the, the, the status of, of um, the pumping station is at a planning stage at the moment. So, um, it, following planning, um, it would move through to a detailed design stage, and at that stage, you would undertake a flotation check. So um, the, the plastic tanks themselves would be um, a, a part of, a, approved by Wessex Water. So they'll be um, on their list of um, standard equipment. And the um, flotation check basically checks against um, where, where you've got a raised groundwater table and a, a, a predominantly em empty tank with air void in it. Um, the groundwater can push up on those tanks. So it's a simple calculation you always do for large underground structures. Um, uh, the, the, uh, you do a flotation check and the um, mitigation against flotation is normally a, a concrete slab. So it, the, the flotation check would determine whether the tanks would have a concrete cover slab or um, a granular bed and surround. Um, so that's a, a check you'd do through the detailed design stage. Um, not yet been done on, on these particular tanks, but, um, you know, you would check against flotation. Okay, thank you, John. Um, Gillian, we've, we've talked about uh, the visitation of the site by uh, Wessex Water staff. How would you access the compound during an emergency if Cometro Lane is flooded, as it is known to do? Yeah, so if we couldn't get to the pumping station, and needed to during a flood event. Um, and perhaps the, the reason for that would be that it had stopped working and stopped pumping forward, is that we would bring in a, a tanker and look to access the system from an upstream um, manhole and take away, so suck out the sewage from that point. So the tanker, if you like, would in effect um, replace the pumping station for a while um, until we were able to sort out the problem. Okay. Uh, the local resident has asked, uh, will any of the infrastructure be enhanced above standard design? For example, extra linings, covers, enhanced joints and seals? Um, 
we would say to that that the design and construction guidance, which is the water industry standard, is deemed to be sufficient here. So during construction, our inspectors, if we were to adopt the um, infrastructure, will be visiting regularly um, to inspect the works and also do an air test to make sure it is watertight. Thank you. And obviously an important final question, uh, just to be absolutely clear on what the answer is. Can Wessex water be prosecuted for leaks and spillages of sewage into the natural environment? Yes, I mean, we take our role as a custodian of the environment very seriously and on environmental um, assessments and, and targets, we are industry leading. Um, many of my colleagues have environmental based qualifications and campaign for all manner of environmental improvements in, in, their, in our and their own time. Um, last significant breach we had was in 2018. Um, Wessex Water paid compensation of nearly a million pounds for a consent breach at our sewage treatment works at Swanage. Um, you know, we're always, the whole industry is very open on mistakes and um, you can look online for, for all the, the whole nationwide um, water industry and um, compare us against other companies and see where fines have been made. Okay, thank you very much. We'll move on to another uh, big question that's been raised by uh, local residents and that's, are there likely odour and noise issues and what best practices mm -hmm. followed? Okay, so there are likely to be odour and noise issues if the pumping station is constructed in accordance with the design and construction guidance and maintained and operated effectively. Any complaints can be called in to our 24-hour staffed call centre. Our process scientist will investigate complaints and take mitigation measures as appropriate. The council's environmental health officer has the powers to take enforcement action and I cannot recall this being done in my time as our process is robust and matters are usually resolved. Um, our guidance states that pumping stations, the wet well of the pumping station must be at least 15 metres from um, habitable buildings. Okay, thank you very much. Add to that, um, uh, Gillian, the, the uh, edge of the wet wells are more than 20 metres away from um, the, the most local um, existing dwelling, so you know, we've uh, exceeded the um, guidance in that respect. Thanks, John. And then, Gillian, could you explain the requisition process? This is the word that sprung up. Uh, in, in our discussions and it would be useful to understand uh, or for members to understand mm -hmm. what, what the requisition process is. Yeah, so a developer can instruct the sewage undertaker to requisition a sewer pipe across third party land. So in, in effect to get from the development to the existing public network. So they aren't um, so they are able to connect to the public network. Um, and under the Water Industry Act, sewage undertakers have special powers to do this by formal notice. Thanks very and much. This, yeah, this can extend to other infrastructure. Okay, that's great. So that concludes the main questions on the pumping station that have been raised by local residents, local councillors and myself. Uh, we just touch now on the uh, another part of the utility infrastructure, and that's the mm -hmm. water booster. Uh, Gillian, can you just uh, set out what a water booster actually is? Yes, um, water booster station is required where dwellings are situated at too great a level below the source reservoir to see, receive water at appropriate pressure. Water will be boosted by pumps according to demand. So we have a slide here, uh, again, uh, setting out the anatomy of a water booster station. So if you'd like to just talk to this slide. 
Yeah, um, I mean, it's contained within a GRP um, kiosk typically, and it's a, a set of pumps that you can see there with an inlet and an outlet, and they um, are, operate according to, to demand. Um, so it's normally uh, duty assist. So yeah, you have at least two pumps and if one fails, um, another one is, is brought into use automatically. Thank you very much. Uh, why is it located where it is proposed? Could it be located elsewhere? So housing on the development site will require a boosted supply where uh, dwellings are located above the 44 metre contour line. Um, ideally, the booster will be located on the development site on or below that 44 contour line. So it's not all houses that require um, boosted supply on the site. It's typically, well, it's because of the topography of the site and there are some high points there. Thank you. And um, are there likely noise issues? And again, what best practices followed? So kiosks are designed to keep noise to a minimum to reduce the impact on surrounding dwellings. Regular maintenance and inspections by supply inspectors are during office hours and, and take place typically every two months. Um, booster stations are constructed in accordance with our designed design standards so there should be you know no issues unless there is something wrong and you can see that with water supply we do inspect more regularly um, than the sewage pumping station which is you know quite correct thing to do and from our design standards I've just got a snippet here that I can read out to you that the internal noise in any building or kiosk should not exceed 80 decibels and that means inside the booster station um, and a target of less than 70 decibels should be set. And the perceived noise at a distance of one meter from outside the building containing the pump should not exceed 75 decibels. Okay, thank you very much. If I could uh, go back to John and, and Lawrence and ask, uh, just to complete the trio of, uh, of pieces of utility infrastructure here, uh, just to comment on the, the gas pressure reduction station, could we get uh, could we get a definition of that, please? Yeah, so uh, the uh, gas pressure reducing station in, in this instance is to reduce the um, uh, transmitted gas from a medium pressure main down to a low pressure main that would be that's used to feed the dwellings. Um, so it's um, a, a small um, garden shed type um, uh, uh, facility which houses a valve uh, essentially to reduce the pressure of the medium gas which is the medium pressure main which is the, the pressure at which um, gas is transmitted at down to a low pressure um, which can be um, uh, you, you know received by the, the individual dwellings. Um, I'm not sure if we've got a, an anatomy of a, a pressure reducing station. You, you probably you will be walking past them all the time, um, similarly with the pumping station, but you won't have uh, you won't have noticed. I, I did um, pick up a plan actually, um, which shows that there is a um, a an existing uh, pressure reducing station, some sort of 50 yards from the site, um, just down Cometro Lane. Um, if I can find that, I could probably share that, couldn't I? Yeah. So, um, I don't know if I can take over the sharing. Mm. Yeah. Is that going to complicate your, um, your we, presentation? We, we, we will release that in, in due course, I think. John. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. So, but that's that's essentially the um, the purpose of the gas pressure so, uh, reducing station. To, to reduce from a medium pressure to a low pressure um, so that it can be the, the gas can be connected to individual houses. So again to follow the questions that we've raised on on the other aspects why is it located where it is proposed and could it be located elsewhere? 
Yeah, the, the reducing station is um, similarly, it needs to be accessed off a um, adopted highway um, and it's local, the, um, it's local to the medium pressure main. So the, the um, location is so that we can extend that medium pressure main up Comtro Lane um, and reduce the pressure down to low pressure to, to distribute around the site. The main is just a, a little bit further down Comtro Lane. That's why that's there. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, finally, are there likely noise issues? And again, what best practices followed? Yeah, so I spoke to GTC, who are the adopting authority. I, I, I have sort of three or four of these scale of developments on at a, a time. Um, GTC are, um, uh, are the utilities um, adopter on all of them, and um, three of them have um, pressure reducing stations. Um, GTC op, uh, own and operate hundreds of um, pressure reducing stations across um, across the, the country, and um, I, I tried to um, ascertain if they that there were any noise issues that they're aware of, um, and they they've, uh, they they haven't got any recorded um, complaints about noise issues from from those pressure reducing stations that they own and maintain. So uh, really, the answer is no. they they're not. Um, they're not a, a um, sort of emitter of noise, really. Okay, thanks very much, John. Um, so we've reached the end of the uh, prepared questions and the slides that, that we've put together uh, to inform this briefing. Um, I hope it has been informative and useful to you. Uh, this is not the end of the process, obviously, and there may well be more pertinent um, questions that need answering between now and the planning committee. Uh, but for now, can I thank our contributors for their assistance in delivering this briefing? Um, if you do have any questions, then I'll throw back to the chair to, to field those questions. Again, just as a reminder, in doing so, you are reminded and advised not to provide an opinion, as you may prejudice yourself from future involvement at the planning committee. Uh, but with that advice, I'll um, hand back to the chair to uh, field any questions and I uh, will take it from there. We have a, a period of time before now in the next briefing that we can Indeed. use time to answer any questions that haven't been covered. Indeed. Thank you, Simon. Um, OK, I need you to stop sharing your screen so I can see the, uh, uh, the participants on my screen, please, if you wouldn't mind. And thank you. Um, I've now got, I've got four councillors that have got their hands up, so I'm going to take them in the order that they came in. And the first councillor is uh, Councillor Habib Farbahai, please. Habib, your question. Uh, thank you, Simon. Both Simons, you know, for the briefing has been you know, very useful. Uh, my, my questions are as follows, actually. Uh, can, can, I, can I actually, before, before I put the questions to you, can, can, I, can I have the location plan for these multi-station on, on the screen so uh, everybody can actually see those? Um, and... Is it possible to, to see the plans? To no, me to do that, do that again? Sorry. Could, yes. Simon, can you, can you put those that uh, back on the screen for me? I don't have access to the slides, you see. Okay, um, the location of multi stations is actually adjacent to Honeysuckle. Okay, we all agree with that. Why can we not have that, you know, some hundred yards away from the from that property? Uh, I, I believe you can. Uh, when I think uh, you mentioned about the contour of the land, and you know, ha having to have that arrangements forty four meters. Uh, below that contour, uh, that can actually go to the east of the property a little bit further up. You still can use this similar access, but you, you, you're away from the existing property. So uh, I think that is, that is a possibility, and I think we should actually really look at that seriously. I say that for a number of reasons. Um, 
if the gas pressure reducing station uh, was to fail, and we know they have failed, we, we only, in the past, we, we only have to look at what happened on the December the 3rd, with that horrible and disastrous um, explosion at the water treatment plant in Bristol, Avon North. What, what is the safeguard that, I mean, what, what, what are the lessons that can be learned from that uh, tragic uh, accident? Should we not actually allow a parameter, a safe parameter from existing homes that, you know, that, that can actually safeguard the nearby residents? Um, this, is, this is my, my main um, uh, sort of issue with the, with, with the property. I mean, we, 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 where we are going to put these multi stations, because currently the whole area is under. Uh, 285, 286 acres, and surely we can actually position that some hundred meters away from the existing honeysuckle property. Because I, none of us, just imagine if any of us had that property, how many of us would want to have that size facility outside our door? Uh, the noise, it's not, it's not just the noise of the pumping station, those heavy machinery coming in and going out on a regular basis is, is, is going to be an issue. Um, and and I've have, I have serious concerns with that. Um, in terms of uh, the position of the pumping station at Newborn, um, we know that it has leaked in the past. You know, uh, some tests have been done and, and it, has, it has been the fact that it has leaked. Uh, I think a lot of residents are concerned that this leakage can, be, can happen on a regular basis because the properties uh, at um, Garmington side of it, uh, those developments are actually sitting on, on a valley. So as soon as you actually have a rainfall, you can rest assured that land is going to flood on a more regular basis. I don't know, uh, I mean, Simon uh, Fox has been on the side and, and he probably knows what I'm actually talking about in here. So my concern is that the, the regular amount of water that will be flowing down, you know, through through that set of, that valley coming coming down, and I think uh, it was mentioned that number of areas actually live with that um, with pumping stations. But can can we have some sort of indications that how many multi pumping stations are actually within within you know? And a nearby settlement, you know, where, where you have, you know, uh, all, all those facilities, one next to the other. Um, so I, I am quite concerned about the position of it, purely because there are residents living there. And I'm concerned about regular flooding, because I, I'm absolutely sure that, you know, we will see more and more flooding happening. And the water actually gushes down through that valley and goes into that field. And I'm really concerned about the pollution that will result uh, in the Gomington stream being um, um, sort of polluted on, on some sort of, um, if not regular, but on, on some sort of uh, occasions. Uh, so I, I need to be convinced with that. And I think the, the residents are really concerned with that as well. Thank you. For Simon. Thank you. Um, Simon, uh, do you want to uh, answer the questions as we go or do you want to save them up? Um, I think we'll just take them as they come, I think, really, because then uh, any future questions we can listen to the answer. Yep. Then perhaps you could answer Councillor Far Behind. The next person on my list is uh, Councillor Simon Nichols. So if you get yourself ready, Simon. So, too many Simons on this call. <laughs> I, I think. Uh, Chair, we've got to be slightly careful in not entering a debate or a discussion on the planning merits of a of a proposal, and uh, uh, and therefore I think you know uh, Councillor Fahibi's uh, comments are largely those that are probably more relevant for a planning committee. I think we've tried to, or some of the questions are trying to tease out uh, and answer uh, some of uh, con those concerns that the councillor has raised. Um, and uh, ultimately it'd be for the planning committee to decide whether the uh, the mitigation is is or the answers to that 
that, that those concerns have been suitably answered. Um, I think we've we've looked at the matter of new barns. I don't think it leaks as such as it has a has a legal uh, right to discharge into the Gamerton stream, which this uh, proposed facility will not have. So I think that there's there's a, a need to listen to the the information that's been given to you um, this afternoon into this evening, and uh, and, and decide whether uh, that that arrests a lot of the concerns that have been raised. Um, I I I would refer to my uh, Wessex Water colleagues, but I don't believe the the situation the situation at Avonmouth is particularly helpful or relevant. And comparable to this particular facility that we're looking at uh, today. Other than that, I'll take the councillors' comments. I've noted them down, and we'll uh, discuss them as a development team uh, moving forward towards the planning committee. Okay, thank, thank you for that. One one question I I have regarding new barns, and that was um, one of your colleagues. I think it was a gentleman from Stantec suggest, said. I think I don't want to. Uh, uh, I'm not entirely sure that I heard correctly. Um, but I think he said that these um, stations were never closer than 15 or 20 metres to a residential property. I take it that that's not the case in, in New Barns because it was seemed to me to be adjacent to the house rather than 15 or 20 metres away. And I take it that we're talking about something of a similar construction rather than identical because it obviously wasn't 20 metres away. No, so um, I was referring to the 15 metre uh, cordon sanitaire that's required um, by the design and construction guidance. Ah, so the current right. guidance, that's current guidance for um, new pumping stations. Um, I, I, I felt older this week um, homeschooling my kids, but um, I, I wasn't uh, I, I, I wasn't practising when uh, new, new Barn was constructed. So I assume it was constructed under different um, you know, historical uh, guidance. Thank, so thank you. Thank, thank you for that clarification. I'm going to move on to the uh, other councillors asking questions. And as I said, the next person on my list is uh, Councillor Simon Nichols, please, followed by Councillor John Hunt. So, Simon Nichols, please. Thank you, Simon, and all the Simons and the other pre presenters. Um, Gillian, question. A couple of questions for you, if I may. Um, part way during the long list of questions that you received from residents. Unfortunately, I lost my connection. Um, I, could you answer, please, the question about how you access the site should Comitro Lane flood? I'm particularly interested to hear that, and I didn't hear it, so if you could repeat that for me, please. And my other question is, the images that you've shown earlier in your presentation of other sites around the district or around the town, can you explain to members if those sites are comparable in terms of their dimensions and sizes, if they're comparable to the one we're looking at here, please? That's my second question. And thirdly, um, uh, uh, yeah, similar to Councillor Farbahai, I am concerned about the location. He makes some good points, very good points about where it's sited. And a couple of your presenters did mention that um, with landscaping and various other things, it's very easy to walk past, cycle past, whatever, and, and forget that they're there, there and not take any notice. Well, that may well be the case, but I shouldn't imagine that that's the case with people who are living next to the site. And in particular, I'm thinking of Honeysuckle and other places close by and Lloyd Close, etc. It's one thing walking by, passing by, it's something else living next to it. Um, so I think exploring Councillor Fabahai's uh, comments are certainly worth doing. But the, if you could answer the first two questions, I'll be grateful. Thank you. Simon, are you okay for me to answer? Yeah, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Councillor yeah. Nichols. Right. Thank you. Um, in terms of the first question, uh, with regards to if Comitro Lane is flooded. We'd only need to get to the pumping station in that circumstances if um, there was a particular issue with it. We'd expect it to carry on working, if you like. Um, if there was an issue and the foul sewerage, uh, the wet well was filling up, then what we would do is get a tanker in and go to an upstream manhole and suck the sewerage out of the system from there. So effectively the tanker would become um, a temporary wet well, if you like. 
Um, then looking at comparable pumping stations, uh, I haven't done a complete analysis of all the catchments, um, pumping station catchments in Taunton to see how many dwellings they um, accommodate. We know that New Barns is about 200, Combing Trail is going to be about 2,000. Um, I'd say the one at Silk Mills uh, that we shared the picture of is fairly comparable and we can um, supply some other pictures of comparable pumping stations in our region um, as well. Um, regarding the where the SPS is cited, um, I think the, the councillor before talked about the 44 metre contour line and that is for the booster station. So that's where any properties above the 44 metre line we do have to boost to and the pumping station needs to be sited below that line. But the foul pumping station, that is different and it does need to be at the low point of the site. I think the point I would make, Gillian, just to support that on, uh, uh, in the position of the foul pumping station, um, you, you know, I'm a civil engineer by trade and we've, we've built lots of um, deep, deep shafts. Uh, Wessex do own and manage lots of uh, deep, deep shafts. But I think the, 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 the position of the pumping station is such that um, the wet well and manhole become a, a, a sort of what we call a traditional um, construction. So it's not so deep as to need um, special uh, construction methods. The further you move it up the hill, the, the incoming sewerage is still at the same level. So if you move the station up the hill at all, it becomes deeper. And the further you move it up, the more risk you are of going into sort of special construction and um, moving away from a, a more standard construction. So it, it, it is important, and, and, and that has cost and, and implementation implications, but it is important that these things are, are located at, and indeed health and safety um, implications. So it is important that they're located at the low point. Okay. I'm going to move on to Councillor John Hunt now. John, followed by Sarah Wakefield, please. John. Thank you, Simon, Simon, and everybody else that's spoken. Um, yeah, just firstly, uh, I completely agree with uh, councillors Farberhigh and Nichols on what they've said about where the uh, pumping station's uh, been moved next door to its previous uh, planning application. Um, I, I too think it should be moved from that, and I would like to expand on that very slightly. Um, I agree, or not agree, it clearly needs to be at the lowest point available. Um, I don't actually see, as it doesn't need access to the Galmington stream, as you've already said, why this cannot be located in the centre of the development. The Spine Road itself will go along what I think is quite low, low-lying area. I'm not even certain it wouldn't be equally as low, if that's, uh, if that's making sense, um, to where it's going now. So quite why it couldn't be in the centre of the development. The only thing I can think, but it wouldn't be, of course, it wouldn't be terribly desirable for the sale of the properties on there, but it's okay, if I may make the comment, to plonk it where, where existing residents already live. That's the first point, why it can't, why it cannot not be moved to the centre. In terms of the flooding, where it's put existing at the moment, where they're proposing, where you're proposing to put it at the moment, um, it is right on the edge of the uh, flood zone three, is it not? Yes, it's not in it, but I don't see that any allowance there has been made for what is that thing now going on? Global warming, isn't it? Now, surely global warming is, is a big problem. And yes, it's a one in 100 shot. That's quite high risk, I think, uh, at, uh, at uh, level three. However, with global warming, surely just on the edge is going to be a problem, is it not, in the future? I'm assuming that's been taken to, into account. If not, why not? Um, second question on that, really. Um, the 24-hour control centre that Gillian was talking about, um, you said seven days, Gillian, that's great, but does that include bank holidays, Christmas days, boxing days and lockdowns? I know hopefully by the time this is put up we'll be out of lockdown, but the way things are going we could well come back to these sort of lockdowns again. So is that being taken into account of as well? Um, in addition to that, you mentioned about the noise from the water pump. Um, 
so many decibels, it's got to be under and what have you. Um, again, is that water pump, if the noise becomes excessive, is it automatically connected to this 24 hour alarm system? Uh, John was talking about um, the highway that had to be the adopted highway to gain access to the gas station and obviously the other two stations as well. Um, again, going back to my point, why can't this be off the spine road, which although won't be adopted initially, surely that will soon be adopted once these uh, properties are put up. So I, I would have thought access along a fairly good sized modern highway would be a lot better, not a highway, but a modern road, um, would be a lot better than a little lane, which is uh, at the moment subject to flooding and, uh, and is very narrow indeed. So I would have thought that was much better. And just my final point, it's a point rather than a question. Um, I think Gillian was talking about wet wipes. Um, it's down to the people not to abuse the system. Obviously, Gillian, you're quite right. But from my own experience here in uh, Bishop's Hull, for example, uh, we've had some issues here on a King Lake development of a Simmon build uh, where wet, wet wipes are absolutely oozing sewage from uh, one of the uh, manhole covers there, which was not very nice. Yes, they need to be educated, but the reality is people will put the wet wipes and uh, other sundries uh, into their toilet system. Um, is there something we can do or perhaps the builders can do to not stop it? I appreciate very difficult to stop but really tell the people as they're buying that you really mustn't do this. Is this something you're going to do? Thank you for that, Simon. Okay. Does any of you uh, like to come back on those points before I bring Sarah Wakefield in? I think there's a number of points there, Chair. I wonder if uh, whether John and, and Gillian would pick up any points that they've noted down raised okay. there by Councillor Hunt. Yeah, so I mean, I can address the the um, the, the floodplain um, issue. I mean, the point I would make is that it is flood compatible infrastructure. So you know, it's not it, it's not unheard of for stations such as this to be within um, floodplain. Um, we are looking at the plan. We're a good meter or two whilst we're whilst the sort of application boundary um, comes up to that floodplain. We're, we're a, a meter or two up the contours from the floodplain, so uh, you know we, we are away from the floodplain. But I, I think the key point I would make is that it is flood compatible infrastructure. Um, you know um, we're, we're aware of climate change when we model the Galmington stream. We model um, to take account of our current thinking on on climate change. Um, but uh, I, the, the point I would really make is that it is flood compatible infrastructure um, uh, and it's designed to function in that environment. So, um, you know, uh, that, that's, that's the point I'd really make about the proximity of the floodplain. Thank you. I wonder if you just get, uh, ask Gillian to just comment a bit further on the wet wipe issue. It's obviously uh, probably a corporate uh, mm -hmm. issue that you talk about all the time so I wondered if, if you could just comment on that I think there is a public responsibility to try and do the right thing yeah. um, of course you know uh, no one wants these things to uh, to fail but uh, we all play a part in in making that uh, less likely so what can you say to Councillor Hunt in in terms of the question he raised? Um, well I think you know it's on a many pronged attack, if you like, educating our customers not to dispose of these products um, down, the, down the toilets. Also working with the, the manufacturers um, to see if there are alternatives and how they are labelling their products. And working with the house builders, um, like Councillor Hunt suggested, in providing messages to, to people when they move into um, new developments as well. Uh, we were worried at the start of lockdown and um, the shortage of toilet paper and, and maybe thinking then that wet wipes would increase and for a short time we, we did see a spike in the, the use of wet wipes because of that toilet roll um, shortage. But just on another point as well that was mentioned, um, our, our con is our call centre and our operational staff um, working 24 hours a day, seven hours a day, sorry, seven hours of days a week. Um, 
over three, six, five days. And yes, absolutely. I think Christmas Day is quite busy for us with all that turkey fat going down the sewers. So yeah, certainly we're, yeah, my colleagues are covering um, our network all of, all of the time. Um, and yes, both on water supply and on the sewage side. So answer queries and um, visit all, all uh, uh, infrastructure whenever we, we need to. And I can't recall us having um, any complaints I, ever on noise from booster stations, um, pumping stations and sewage treatment works. Yes, that's documented, but I can't think of um, booster stations. If appropriate, I'll come back on your question about if it could be located in the middle of the site. Um, so I've had a look at the contour maps while we've been talking. The Gamington stream um, runs uh, through the site um, and the, the compound is at the, the downstream end of the Gamington stream. So you mentioned the spine road crossing um, and that's several metres above the, um, the current location. So uh, I guess the answer is, is, is similar to, to my previous point that, um, you know, that you would be moving that um, station up the hill and it would be, you know, become significantly deeper and a, a significantly bigger infrastructure. Okay. Share, the, share the contour plan if you like. Yeah. Okay, well, thank, thank you for that. The yeah, next... may I just come back on that one last point, may I? Or yeah. with John? Yes, John. Yes, John. Thank you, Chair. I appreciate that. John, just a, a point on your, your, your map, as it were, you've been looking at there. Um, I agree that the Galmington stream probably is lower than the centre of the development. Um, but actually, where, where this is going to be now, where it's actually located now, outside the Honeysuckle residence there, um, is that not a similar sort of height or even slightly higher? It is up the hill a bit, isn't it, from the stream? And I, I know the Spine Road is at quite a low level there, isn't it? So I really can't see why this cannot be put in the middle. So the, the pumping station in, uh, in Galmington there that we've, we've seen pictures of that looks like a garage, um, that's been put right in the middle of the development with 300 houses. Why can't this be put in the middle, middle of the development with the 2,000 houses? I, don't, I really don't understand that and why it's not, I presume it's been investigated, but I've, never, I've asked the question several times and never really had an answer that's made me feel that investigations have taken place. It almost feels that, no, it's not going there because that will make the properties for sale there less desirable. And I think this is a monetary thing. But please put my mind at rest, John. Yeah, no, I, I, I can conclusively confirm that the, you know, the, the topography uh, does fall towards the low point of the site. And it, I can probably uh, find out the, uh, the levels. The plan I've got at the moment hasn't got the exact levels. I've got contour plans. But we're coming up probably four contours, five contours to the middle of the site. So, um, yeah, it, it, it is higher and it would, would mean that the pumping station became deeper. Thank you for that, John. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you. Uh, Councillor Sarah Wakefield, please. Sarah. Uh, thank you, Simon. I won't put my um, photograph on because it, yeah, I can't get the possible connect, proper connection. Lip, sm small things, really. Um, I'm, I, too, am interested in the location and the fact that it's been stuck behind somebody's house. Um, I think that is terribly unfair, and I do concur with my other local councillors about that. What I gathered from what somebody said, it might be the chap from Stantec, if they were simply prepared to dig down a bit lower, a bit, bit, bit more, and put this further away, it would just mean a little bit more expense. So I think probably local councils are saying, why not do that then? It seems really unfair just because the, the landowner of the house that's going to be affected by this sold the land behind their home, which was presumably farmland beforehand, that they should be affected. That just seems terribly unfair to me. Um, I'm interested in the access. I was interested in what you said about the amount of vehicles accessing this twice a year that's great to hear because my understanding was that this development didn't have any right to access 
off site and that was part of the outline planning commission which people were pleased to have put in so they didn't want other accesses being used but if it's only twice a year that's fine but obviously there's going to be construction vehicles going in and out which people who live there probably weren't expecting but my question was where you show um two questions actually have there been any complaints about the new barn park um, pumping station or others and i think you've slightly touched on that but i think we'd like that information if it takes time to ca capture it that's fine but i think those local councillors would particularly like to know what complaints there may have been about pumping stations and their activities and secondly on your rather nice plans you show all these lovely new trees around it i don't think those are existing trees i think they're new trees which you're showing as mature so could you confirm that perhaps you will be putting some semi-mature trees in rather than just little stumps that won't really uh, um, um, won't really screen it for many years. Thank you. Okay. Simon, I don't know which one of your, your, your colleagues wants to take that. Um, well, probably if we go back to John, I think he's, you know, okay. he's, I think really it's uh, the consultant team to hear the uh, councillor's uh, opinion on moving it, digging it down and incurring that extra expense. Um, and uh, maybe Gillian could just answer the question on the complaints, um, either on new barns and any other pumping station. Okay, yeah, so shall I go first with the, um, the, the moving it uh, issue? Yeah, go John. My point really was that at the moment we're into a standard form of construction um, and as you get deeper, you, you get into more specialist construction and deep, deep shafts with health and safety and uh, uh, more complicated construction procedures. So that was really my point about why we position um, pumping stations at low points. Um, and yeah, and, and, and that's why it's positioned at the low point. But it's just cheaper. No, because it, it, it's a more standard construction. I mean, it, it, you, we, we'll be looking at a wet well with uh, standard manholes rather than a tunnel, a tunneled shaft, which obviously has, has greater sort of um, uh, operational issues. You know, as a designer, we have to consider um, operation of facilities, uh, you know, from, from, particularly from a health and safety perspective. So as a designer, we position that station in the, the appropriate position. Okay, John, on that very point, if I may, um, sorry to cut across my colleagues, but uh, on, on that very point, where on that site does that uh, change take place? We've, talk, we've, we've heard a couple of things, talked about the 44 metre contour um, and that this um, public station is going to be at the lowest point of the site. At what point on the site um, do you have to change from the standard method of construction to a more expensive method of construction i mean as you move you you move the um facility at all really you're in into moving it up the hill um and it's fairly steep down um to, to the low point where, where where we positioned the station so uh, the the normal uh, normal maximum desirable depth for a, a manhole would be sort of six meters um, and we, we're just over that at the moment with the pumping station wet well. So, you know, moving it up the hill um, uh, j just uh, increases the depth and associated issues with the with um, pumping station, I guess. At what, at what point does it become unviable? Is it 20 metres up the hill, 30 metres up the hill? Uh, if, if we move it up the hill at all, it becomes deeper because the, the contours become quite tight as, as, as you work your way into the site. So, Can I just say that uh, when, when you look at the land there, if you go past that honeysuckle house, the road goes away from the stream. But if you went down towards the stream, you'd still be quite low down. You just wouldn't be near any houses. And if you don't own that land, you ought to think about buying it. Okay, so I'm not I'm not aware of the, the patch of land that you're you're referring to. Um, you know, we we've we've assessed the uh, land within control of the um, the consortium, and we found the low point and the most appropriate point for the pumping station, um, and, and and that's that's where it is. 
Maybe Gillian could just pick up the point about complaints, Chair. Of course. Gillian. Yeah, sorry, I was just looking at, um, I receive a monthly report on odour complaints, so just opening it up and um, seeing if I can get some stats for you. Uh, no complaints on new barns, and I don't believe we've ever had any, but just looking for this year, and I've just got the stats for between January and July, so seven months, we had 57 complaints for the whole of the Wessex water region, so that's around 1,200 pumping stations. Um, so 57 complaints that were verified as being caused by odour from our sewage pumping station. Less than 2%. Right, okay. Okay, thank you. Um, right, I've got uh, two, two councillors that wish to uh, ask further questions. Um, that's Councillor Dixie Darch, please. You haven't spoken yet, Dixie, so um, I'll bring uh, you up. And then thank you. Um, thank, thank you, Simon. So um, because I'm on the Planning Committee, this is a, a carefully, it is a question. It's a neutral question, not an opinion. And I just want to know, um, is there, has there been a, any precedent, uh, like, you know, what would the possibility be of um, compensation being paid um, to the residents of the property that is very close. And they may not want that, but I'm just interested to know whether um, that might be in the mix. Okay. I'm not sure which one of them might pick that up. I don't know. I think I'll just comment on, on, on the issue generally insofar as uh, the planning system doesn't doesn't operate on that basis, so it's certainly not a planning consideration. And of course, to do so, you would be um, you would be accepting some level of uh, harm and, and and claim for that. And I think what what the planning decision is is to ascertain whether there is actually planning harm or not. And the basis of this briefing is to ensure that uh, the planning committee members ultimately have all the information they need and we've we've asked you know hundreds of questions probably during this briefing and during this supplementary question session so that members can make a robust decision on the application um, the questions uh, to date have been largely on why can't it be put elsewhere but of course planning committee members will be fully aware that you have to judge the planning application before you and therefore it's not a case of could it be put somewhere else but what's wrong with it where it is and of course you know you can't refuse a planning application purely on the basis that you desire or would prefer the facility in a, in a different location unless you have a demonstrable harm that you can evidence uh, in a reason for refusal so um, I, 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 I'm not going to answer the question on conversation because it's, it's not a planning issue for me to to comment on but I think there is the wider issue that that councillors do need to obviously bear in mind and this will be the advice given at the planning committee irrespective of what the recommendation is okay thank you thank you for that um councillor farber you wanted to come back on something yes uh, if i may uh, uh simon my, my question is actually to john heath you know he mentions that if he goes a bit further up uh, you know it, it will be obviously deeper but it will go away from the standard uh, construction but surely you know the, if you if you don't if if you don't know how the contour actually works if, if it's two meters or three meters and you know going down two three meters is not going to be hugely expensive like yourself uh, john i'm a uh, engineer as well and this this sort of thing can can actually be overcome pretty easily so i would strongly suggest that we actually looking we, we, we look at positioning the multi-station a bit further up um, and into a more convenient position away from local residents' home. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, so good to speak to a fellow engineer. Um, but uh, uh, you, with, with all due respect, you know, we're, we're the designers and it's our responsibility to uh, make sure that we're designing something that operationally 
and we're, we're mitigating uh, risks. So fundamentally moving a pumping station up a hill is, is increasing the depth and associated risks. And the position it is in, in, in our view is appropriate from a design perspective. Um, you know, the, the contours are quite tight there. Um, so yeah, it, you would be deepening the pumping station and as designers, we, we deem that's um, an appropriate position for it. Okay, uh, I've got a, another hand up at the moment from a David Nottingham, but I I'm afraid I don't recognise the name. So, uh, Mr Nottingham, perhaps you'd be kind of introduce yourself. Yes, yeah, sorry, my name is David Nottingham. I work for Brookbanks and we work for the consortium alongside Stantec et al. Um, I'd just like to add on to John's comments about the location of the pumping station. It is not purely about the technical delivery of the pumping station, it's our concern. It's also the health and safety impact of having a overly deep uh, pumping station with a long-term maintenance of that and the impact it has on the water company um, who, who have to operate and access that system. By increasing the depth of it, it makes it a far more dangerous uh, uh, maintenance liability and there has to be additional training for people to ass assess it. There is also the additional sustainability impact. You deepen it by another two to three meters, then over the lifetime of the scheme, for so 40, 50 years or so, we're having to pump so, 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 so many thousands of meters of extra water over extra head, which will, you know, triple the, the demand of the site itself over that running period. So we are not just looking at the the initial cost is the whole life costs and the whole life energy of the scheme. So we move this, move the pumping station up the hill. It increases the depth by two to three meters. It also makes it a more uh, onerous liability on the water company to maintain it. It also then adds uh, an increase in the demand of the site as well, which we are trying to mitigate. It's so, you know, Stantec, who I did used to work for many years ago, have spent a long time looking at this. We have spent a lot of time looking at alternative arrangements for this. We believe this is the best location, not just for costs, which I know you're rather cynical about, but as a whole life assessment on the sustainability of the scheme itself. So, you know, it's not just one thing, it's a myriad of different uh, items joining together to, to get this location confirmed. Okay, okay thank, thank you for that. My apologies for not knowing who you were, David. Um, Okay, now we've been going at this for uh, an hour and three quarters. We've of course got another briefing uh, in a quarter of an hour. And my and the uh, and uh, the council staff need to make sure they can get everything together. So, are there any last minute burning questions before I bring this to a close? John Hunt. Simon, Simon, Simon may I just interject? Sorry, be, 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 uh, just a moment, if you don't mind. Just, uh, just. Yeah, David actually mentioned the point that this, you know, they've done a lot of work and this is the best possible position for, for the multi-stations. But please, you know, this, the multi-stations were positioned, you know, 20 meters away outside somebody else's homes. So was that the best position initially? So, you know, I mean, the, the argument is, is actually... Is, is, is something that, you know, it doesn't wash with me, I'm afraid. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you for that. John Hunt. Yeah, just very, very briefly, Simon. Um, for John, John, you mentioned you could perhaps get together a, a map giving the heights above sea level, etc. I yeah. would very much like to see that and see, I have, have had a look, it's quite hard to find. But if you could put me in the, point me in the right direction after this, I would very much appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to, uh, I guess, probably from a protocol perspective, we should submit um, a, a, a sort of high level. Um, so obviously the topographical survey of the site is very detailed, but we could put some spot levels on a plan. Well, all I need really is just a simple thing. How high yeah. is the spine road just over the dip there? So you're going up there where, where this site is and then yeah. down. Yeah. And how high is it where the actual application, not the stream, but the actual application is taking place. I'd just yeah. like to know those two heights. We'll extract some um, height, uh, some some level information from the detailed topo and send it through Simon if, if appropriate. That, Thank that you, John and Chair. Very, Thank you. That would be very helpful. Um, so I know Simon will will send it out as soon as he's uh, as soon as he's got it. Okay.
Now I'm going to wrap this up now. Um, however, the most important message is please do not sign out of this meeting or you will not be able to rejoin the, the briefing that starts in 10, 10 or 12 minutes. So please don't sign out or you will not be able to join the second, second briefing scheduled for this afternoon. Okay, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank uh, not only the officers for, for their help today, but our guests. Um, and I hope that most of you have had most of your answers, uh, most of your questions answered. Obviously, if there are still things you wish to uh, uh, obtain more detailed answers, please, please let uh, uh, Simon Fox know and we will do what we can uh, in in the uh, in the run up before this issue come this uh, planning application comes to committee.